Russia's attack on Ukraine has sparked divisions and agreements between Republicans and Democrats here in the U.S. President Biden's handling of the crisis has gotten support from many Democrats and even some Republicans, while other GOP lawmakers have criticized the administration for not being tough enough on Russia and Vladimir Putin. For more on this, I'm joined by Brian Gatulis. He's the vice president of policy at the Middle East Institute. Brian, thanks for joining us. Um, how, how has Republicans traditionally reacted when it comes to Russia? And are you seeing any changes in that approach now? Well, in the past, um, Republicans tended to be quite unified, especially when Russia was the Soviet Union, in opposing what it was doing in the world. But what happened about 10 years or so ago is you had a number of Republicans start arguing that Vladimir Putin actually stood up for what they viewed as conservative values. And the real split came when Donald Trump became president of the United States, and he had a much more accommodationist or appeasement uh, approach to Putin. Um, and that has really split the Republicans and scrambled um, uh, their ranks in, in many sort of unusual ways. And now I think they're quite divided. There's been a bit of a rally around the flag and behind Biden approach over the last few days because of Putin's atrocities. But the Republicans themselves are still deeply split on a lot of national security questions, especially Russia. Yeah, you mentioned this rallying around the flag effect. You know, it's rare these days to see the parties here in Washington agree on anything, but they do seem somewhat united so far in this response to Russia. How important do you think that unity is? It's terribly important because basically over the last a decade or so, uh, many foreign policy and national security questions have become a partisan wedge issue in our politics. And that is not a very good thing because it's the sort of division that is exploited by countries like Russia or China or Iran, who really are America's adversaries. And they see these divisions not only between the parties, but then there's also fissures within um, both parties. So having some sense of unity, and I, I'm quite impressed with how the American public has responded. If you look at the public opinion polls about, say, for instance, oil sanctions uh, on, on Russia, with gas prices as high as they are, it's quite costly for most ordinary Americans. But for them to express a strong majority support for these measures against Putin shows that there's, at the popular level, a national sense of purpose here, a national unity that maybe wasn't there before. And I would hope that our politicians in both parties would, would reflect that, that sense of unity. So former President Donald Trump, obviously still a very prominent voice within the Republican Party. He's been commenting on this crisis. At one point, he even called Russian President Vladimir Putin smart for what he's done. Do you think it's going to be challenging for the former president to get his fellow Republicans, some of his supporters, on board with that kind of message? I, I think so. I mean, look, there'll be just factions in the GOP that will uh, do anything to support Trump. And whatever he says, they will say. So, for instance, there's a Senate candidate, uh, J.D. Vance, who essentially echoes Trump all the time. And he said, I don't care what uh, uh, um, happens in Ukraine. And I think for most regular Republicans, that's going to sound really out of touch uh, the more that they see uh, these images coming out of Ukraine that are just quite horrific and just the, the human impact. So all of these things, unless, and, and, and Trump is a man who changes his tune, he's, he's very chameleon-like on a lot of issues, so he may shift and do a 180 on this as well. Um, but the broader point, and back to your core question, is that the GOP itself is deeply divided on, on this question of Russia, and it's not clear what it stands for uh, writ large on, on America's purpose and its national security approach in the world. So, Brian, let's talk about the current occupant of the White House, President Biden. How do you think he's handled the situation so far? I think he's been fine. He's a bit a little reactive to events. I mean, it was good that they got out ahead with the intelligence and convinced or tried to convince Europeans and even Ukraine's President Zelensky, who didn't want to believe that Russia was going to do this. So he got out in front of this and tried to assemble a diplomatic coalition. Um, but the problem here is that he's largely reacting to Putin's plays, right? So that the more uh, brutal uh, Putin is, um, the more we're actually trying to ratchet up the pressure, but we're not the ones that are driving the agenda here. And I would say that President Biden is uh, dealing with sort of a longstanding challenge that goes back to George W. Bush, uh, Barack Obama, and, and Donald Trump, our previous three presidents, is that Americans and their leaders didn't, did not want to believe in the brutality and the brutal measures of, of Putin, even when it was unfolding in places like Syria. 
And now we're seeing it again in a place like Ukraine. So I think, uh, in, a, in essence, I think Biden's doing a very good job and his team is doing a very good job, but America's playing catch up. Um, it's trying to catch up to events and work with European allies. It's doing it quite capably, but, but it's a very reactive crisis management approach as opposed to trying to actually you know, put Putin more deeply into a, uh, a weaker position here. And a crisis that a lot of people think is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Brian Gatulis, yes. thank you so much. Thank you.